The following program is rated P. It contains poor pronunciation. Hello there, welcome back to Astro Biological. My name's Ben, it's good to have you along. Last time I introduced you all to some of the thinkers and ideas that led to the modern science of astrobiology as we know it. Today we're going to look in a bit more detail at one of these scientists, Christian Huygens. <laughs> Going to go for a walk in his shoes, see the world he discovered as he might have seen it. Christian Huygens was born in 1629 in The Hague in the Netherlands. He was the second oldest child of Constantine Huygens, a Polish diplomat, and Susanna Huygens. Susanna died shortly after the birth of Christian's sister Susanna in 1637, but the young Christian had his four siblings in the care of his father. He never remarried. Now Christian didn't miss out despite this. He had been born into a wealthy family who carried quite a lot of influence and Constantine made sure his family was well looked after. Christian received an impressive, well-rounded education, receiving homeschooling until the age of 16 and became well versed in mathematics and sciences. Some of his math tutors were the best money he could buy, pushing young Christian with a demanding curriculum. He thrived on the workload. Christian impressed teachers and colleagues alike with a keen grasp for mathematics, in particular geometry, and he wanted to travel Europe wearing all in his path. One of his tutors, in a letter to Christian's father, compared young Christian to the ancient Greek scientist and philosopher Archimedes. Christian had inherited an act of engineering as well and spent most of his life working on complex engineering and mathematical problems. He had a theoretical interest in lenses, devoting himself to them during 1652-53, but in 1655 he began to grind his own, working with his brother Constantine. Christian approached lenses and telescopes as a kind of hobby, using them to gain access to telescope makers who were able to help him with his pursuit. It was in 1655 that Christian began using his new telescope in earnest, using it to examine Saturn. He spent time observing its rings, noting details of their structure which were previously unknown. He was also the first to spot a very special place. I can only feel for poor old Christian, stuck here on Earth, only able to look out at Titus through a tiny piece of ground glass. It's kind of incredible what he's able to achieve and realise with not much more than his homemade instruments and a very keen intellect. So today, we salute you Christian Huygens by showing him the world he wondered about and what we may see for ourselves in the future. Titan is a very special place, larger than the planet Mercury. It is the second largest moon in the solar system after Ganymede, and the only moon in the solar system to possess a thick atmosphere and a hydrological cycle. It rains on Titan, there's thick fog on Titan, but it's all composed of methane, not water. This is because the moon is so cold with a surface temperature of about minus 170 degrees, that methane, which we know is a gas here on Earth, <laughs> exists in a liquid phase. Perkins speculated there were oceans on Titan, he really did, simply assuming most worlds to possess water as Earth does. He was wrong on this, but the oceans are definitely there. What would he think, standing on the shore of one of these seas, looking at tiny waves rippling slowly across the surface? With this thick atmosphere, thicker than on Earth, one day a fleet of drones may soar through the clouds and shrouding the surface of Titan. It's a mostly hidden world down there, a mysterious world of valleys and rivers and ancient dried up lake beds. Cryovolcanoes spew an icy form of magma to the surface from an interior which may be internally heated by tidal stresses from Saturn. Even more exciting for astrobiologists, the possible existence of a subsurface ocean of briny water deep underground. Titan is a time capsule, possibly harking back to a prebiotic Earth. But organic compounds coat the landscape, producing the upper echelons of Titan's atmosphere upon interacting with UV radiation from the sun. Organic molecules such as hydrogen and cyanide, which are able to spontaneously form membranes, are produced in Titan's permanent twilight sky and rain down upon the moon constantly. This is where the landscape of Titan, captured here by the Huygens lander, gets its characteristic dirty orange hue. Everything is covered in a layer of organic gunk.
Now, as we know, Hurricanes did of course visit Titan in 2005 as part of their Cassini mission. As part of today's salute to Hurricanes, we introduce him to his namesake. We'll just leave these two alone. I'm sure they have a lot to talk about. Again, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Science is a story of people. It's a testament to determination and free thinking. I hope you enjoyed this little trip to Titan with this discoverer and I'll see you next time. Peace out.